Too much spin is never enough. Raw power may garnish a lot of headlines, but in this crazy game, the art of spinning the ball should never be underestimated. We've already taken a look at the effects of topspin and backspin, but today we're going to take a look at their not so distant cousin, sidespin. In episode 56, How to Use Counterspin, we primarily discussed how the ball's rebound off the paddle changes in a vertical sense, up or down. Up in the case of topspin, down in the case of backspin. With today's topic, however, we're looking at the same principle, but this time horizontally. We've all been there. You see a ball that is high enough to put some real power behind, and there's no one covering the line. You hit the volley clean, but for some reason the ball sails wide. In disgust, you look at the paddle with confusion and disarray. What happened? Chances are it wasn't your lack of accuracy. No, no. You're a Coach Me Pickleball subscriber, so it couldn't have possibly been that. What's at play here is called sliding friction force, and without getting into the physics of it, the gist of it is the ball had some side spin on it and you didn't account for it. Let's now think of a clock that is laid flat on the ground. The first type of side spin that we're going to talk about is counterclockwise, the more commonly hit of the two. Counterclockwise spin is what happens when a ball is relatively low and a right-handed backhand slice is played. It's also the same direction as when a low topspin forehand is played. In either case, the paddle doesn't have enough room under the ball to create direct backspin or topspin, so a certain amount of sidespin is imparted on the ball. Tracking this ball visually is one thing, but how does it react when it hits the paddle? To find out how, let's go back to the practice wall. I'm going to firstly hit a shot with counterclockwise spin. Let's see how it reacts when it hits the wall. It rebounds off to the right much more so than the ball's flight path alone would suggest. I'll now hit the opposite shot, a low slice forehand that has clockwise side spin. This time the ball rebounds to the left. Now that we can all agree the theory is sound, let's see how we can use it to our advantage. Our first scenario is from the right side of the court up at the kitchen line. A regular cross court dink rally is happening and finally the right ball comes. It's a ball that's roughly middle of the box, but isn't so challenging that you can't prepare for an attack off the bounce. Drop your paddle low as early as possible, swinging it out near your left shoe region. We're going to be hitting a forehand with more than enough side spin to cause a reaction. The reaction we are looking for, ideally, is their volley sailing wide. However, we can't count on this, so what we will need to do is be prepared. Using what we know about the ball's reaction on the paddle, we can safely assume that unless they are expecting the shot, the ball will be coming out to your forehand side. This is another classic one-two punch. After preparing the paddle low and left of contact, we can brush across the ball to create counterclockwise side spin. Don't be shy here, folks. Really get after it, not just to accentuate the effect, but also to help leave the paddle in a good position for the counterattack. What's the number one rule of attacking? Always expect the ball to come back. Our target for this attack is going to be their backhand side. If we can cause them to have a late contact on that side of their body, then it helps our cause all the more. This particular scenario is likely the highest percentage way to use this concept well. Let's take a look now at what happens when we use the same shot on the left side of the court. Unfortunately, now the altered rebound angle of our opponent's paddle is helping them keep the ball in the middle of the court and may very well catch our partner off guard. What about the opposite spin, I hear you say? If you insist, I'll show you what that looks like. That kind of spin, for a right-handed player on this side of the court, will be coming from a low inside-out backhand. Even for me, that's a little too risky. Practice this shot. Get a feel for when and why it works. And remember, it's not a sure thing. Anyone who reads your play early enough can bully the spin out of the ball. So just enjoy the process of learning a new technique, drill it, and then don't worry about the results until it's tournament time. Right, I mean, come on, come on. Easy, let's not go crazy, I could stumble right here. Uh, I think so, I don't know, but it's the coolest thing ever. Always expect the ball to come back. Way, I think I can do it. <laughs> right, look, I'm just going with your thing here. <laughs> Practice this shot. Get a feel for when and why it works. And remember. Oh, bugger. I didn't remember. 